This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We have an update on the school year in the Hazleton Area School District next. Happy New Week and welcome everyone. Get comfortable and get ready for your local information from SSP TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. I'm Ken Cara and let's get to it. A modified Fun Fest celebration was held in downtown Hazleton on Saturday and it included the Hazleton Art League's Peace, Love and Chalk event. Joe Madden's Respect 90 Foundation provided the prizes for the winners including the $1,000 first prize for the adult category and an iPad for the first place winner in the junior category. Jennifer Whitner won the adult division and Sky Burke took first in the junior division. The Fun Fest parade was scheduled for Sunday but has been moved to Sunday, September 27th at 2 p.m. The Quaker City String Band will roll around the city of Hazleton so people can stay at home and enjoy the show safely. Now our Janine Lassant gets an update on how school is going in the Hazleton Area School District with Superintendent Brian Uplinger. All in all, it's going very well. Uh, we certainly have hiccups with Microsoft Office and Microsoft Teams. Um, uh, parents are, I'm sure, running into issues with their connectivity at home. Um, the district, however, is, has been up and has been running uh, with connectivity, we're, we're okay uh, in that regard, but uh, we just ask parents to please continue to be patient with us. No one is going to be punished or have consequences um, levied against them because they were kicked out of a team or, uh, or the internet dropped and they were, they were bumped out of a team. I shouldn't say kicked out, but just bumped out of a team. I get asked the question, the most popular question is, how long are we going to be online? Is this something that is going to last the entire school year? That is something we certainly cannot predict. Uh, we don't know just based on how many uh, COVID incidents we have in the area. Uh, that's what we're looking at the most, uh, making sure that those numbers are staying relatively low or even diminishing. We don't certainly don't wanna see another in increase or a surge. Um, however, we are looking to start bringing back some of our students. Uh, starting uh, September 21st, we're going to slowly introduce our autistic support classrooms and those classrooms are going to be uh, addressed in or um, uh, assimilated to uh, the drums elementary middle school uh, we're going to bring back roughly 50 students uh, to, to test the waters those are our most needy students that need to be in in person learning rather than online uh, there's a lot of hands-on that they they need to have um, for their, their disability or ability, which I like to, to, to utilize that word rather than disability. Um, and also we're looking at seniors in our shop classes at CTC. And again, that'll be September 21st. We're looking to bring back just our seniors to the shop classes in the CTC and our autist, autistic support students in, uh, in drums. And Ms. Yanuzi, our director of special education, will be making those phone calls to the parents to make sure that they're okay with those students coming back. Where are we at with computers? Right, and again, I have no idea where or when they're, they're coming in, uh, but they will be coming in. We, we have enough funding uh, to purchase enough, plenty uh, computers for all of the students across the district. So we're just waiting on uh, an update on when they'll, be, when they'll be coming in. Hopefully the middle of October will be the soonest. The latest that I've heard is in December, um, but that could be again, you know, we may be back by, by December. However, that, uh, that doesn't mean that students aren't going to still receive a computer. So everyone, even if we were to come back, a lot of the information will still be online for them. In the event that we have to go back out, mm -hmm. everyone will still receive a computer. Okay. If anyone has a concern uh, with their child, with online learning, with any information uh, through this year, who should they contact? What is the order? Right. They should contact their teacher first. And if they can't get their, their question addressed or their concern addressed, then they need to contact the principal of that school. Uh, and then lastly, if they can't get that addressed or their question addressed through that mechanism, through the, the teacher or the principal, they can certainly always reach out to me. If we were to go back to school, would that be you know a process where that would take a week? I mean, obviously it wouldn't be the day, the, the day after the announcement, but how would they get that information? Right. Um, it say that we were to come back, just like we are with our autistic support and our shop students. We're going a week at a time. 
So we would we would disseminate that information sometime this week. Make sure all the all the parents are okay with those their children coming back or those who have chosen to send their children back. We're going to use that list first. We'd utilize our school messenger system where uh, parents have emails in it. Uh, they have um, also phone numbers in that system. As long as both of those items are updated, we will have no issue getting that information out. We'll also utilize our um, our Facebook page, uh, HASD announcements. Uh, information will be posted there. And we could also even post that information in the Teams. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. It looks like a calm work week right now weather-wise. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight is clear with a low of 41 degrees. Tuesday is sunny with highs in the upper 60s. Tuesday night clear with a low of 46 degrees. Wednesday is sunny with a high of 72. At night, partly cloudy, lows in the mid-50s. Thursday, we're back up in the 70s, a mostly cloudy day with a high of 74 degrees. Thursday night, a 30% chance of showers after 8 p.m., mostly cloudy with a low of 52 degrees. Friday, a 30% chance of showers, mostly sunny though with highs in the mid-60s. 60s and Friday night mostly clear with a low of 42 degrees. It's a local high school football tradition like going to the concession stand for fries or pierogies. I may go grab a quick pierogi while you watch our week one high school football coal scale. In the league night grade, we have our local teams looking for a spark after week one. Marion Catholic gave up four fumbles and had two punts blocked in their loss to Jim Thorpe. They'll try to get back on track quickly when they travel to rival Panther Valley. Owen Kozar put up 90 passing yards in Shenandoah Valley's loss to Tamaqua. He found Joey Vivasis for the Blue Devils' touchdown against the Blue Raiders. In the bituminous grade, we have two teams who showed some flashes on Friday night and may soon just burst into flames. Mono area lost to North Schuylkill. Ben Terry scored two touchdowns for the Golden Bears, including a 75-yard kickoff return for a score. Hazleton area lost a close one on the road to Crestwood. Quarterback Kellen Warner completed 12 passes for 114 yards and had a rushing touchdown. Matthew Bookman grabbed an interception for the Cougars. Now to the anthracite grade, and these two local teams are already on fire in 2020. Tamaqua had over 400 rushing yards in their victory over Shenandoah Valley. Nate Kirby had 161 of those yards and a touchdown. Logan Hess had three rushing touchdowns for the Blue Raiders and 81 rushing yards. North Schuylkill's win over Mono area was Coach Wally Hall's 100th victory in his career. Quarterback Jay Call passed for 362 yards and finished with five touchdowns through the air and one on the ground. Tanner Walkavage caught six passes for 100 and 38 yards and had three touchdowns. Adding pierogies to my online order. Okay, in sports we talk with a former Hazleton area high school wrestler who's fundraising to help fight cancer and he's also doing some research of his own and next we have the story of a local man's legacy living on through a national television show and after that more sports as Dr. James Diem discusses sports vision in the SSP TV Spotlight. Good evening everyone, here's today's talk of the town. Pause for cause for Autism 5K, 10K Run and Resource Fair will be held on Sunday, October 4th with registration beginning at 8 a.m. This event will be at Whitetail Preserve. For more information, you can email safeoffice at autismsafe.com. And that's today's talk of the town. SP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of Gloria Sanzi, age 74, of Hazleton. Mass will be Wednesday at 11 a.m. at Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church in Freeland. Friends may call Wednesday from 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. at the Fiero Funeral Home. Today's social and obituary report is brought to you by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory. Call 570-788-0977 or go to harmonfuneral.com.